Next, here is the schedule for tonight. You will first hear from Dakota County Commissioner Mike Slavic. Uh, he is running unopposed, but we invited him to give a brief statement tonight. Keyword brief, Mike, wherever he's at. <laughs> We're challenging him tonight. Um, then you will hear from candidates for state representative of District 54B. And around 7.30, we anticipate starting the candidates running for Hastings City Council at large. And then, finally, the mayoral candidates will have the final say starting around 8 p.m. Finally, the rules, uh, no interruptions are going to be allowed. This is a forum, not a debate. Candidates will either have one minute or two minutes to answer the question, and we'll alternate who answers the question first. Uh, the, the questions were not given in advance this year. That is a change from a couple of years ago. Um, that was be, uh, based on some feedback we received, so we're trying without uh, giving the questions out in advance this time. Um, we did keep from 2016 the question for each other. So uh, the, in the state representative race and the mayoral race, uh, they will be able to ask each other a question that has been vetted. Uh, that's definitely enough for me. I think let's, uh, let's get started with our candidates. Uh, please welcome to the podium, Dakota County Commissioner, Mike Slavic. Good evening. As Tom said, my name is Mike Slavic, and I am the current Dakota County Commissioner representing the Hastings area, running for re-election this fall. I would like to thank the Hastings Area Chamber of Commerce and Hastings Community Television for giving me the opportunity to share a few words, even though I am the only name on the ballot. I'm a sixth generation resident of District 1 in Dakota County, a graduate of Hastings High School. My wife Maria, daughter Kate, and I make Hastings our home. Together we own a business in southern Minnesota, and I'm a local realtor serving the Hastings area. Previously, I served on the Hastings City Council, and since 2013, I have been your county commissioner. In 2015 and 16, I served as chair of the Dakota County Community Development Agency, which provides economic development support to communities throughout the county and affordable housing for working families and seniors in buildings like Rivertown Court and Mississippi Terrace in Hastings. In 2017, I served as the chair of the Dakota County Board of Commissioners. Since I was last on the ballot in 2014, we've done some big things in Dakota County. We paid off all of our debt, and with a budget of almost $400 million, Dakota County is one of only a handful of counties in the entire country that can say it's debt-free. For the last three years, Dakota County has had the claim of the lowest county portion of taxes in the entire state of Minnesota of all 87 counties. We've doubled our investment in natural resource protection in our parks and throughout the county. During that time, Dakota County got out of an organization that was annually shortchanging the residents of Dakota County by $14 million a year, and that is now money that is locally controlled within Dakota County. With that, we still cannot rest on our laurels. There are four top priorities that I would like to see in the next four years. First of all, continue our good management of taxpayer dollars and county resources. Be accountable for budget priorities, make smart investments in infrastructure, transportation, technology, and the long-term return on investment. Second of all, continue to work on improving our communications. Third, promoting our economic development within Dakota County so that we are competitive with both residents and businesses. And finally, to build on our 2018 initiative to go and uh, improve the, uh, the issue of homelessness and housing in Dakota County. Right now, in the last four years, uh, housing, house, excuse me, homelessness has increased by uh, two times, and we'd like to go and make sure that we, that is not a trend for Dakota County. Finally, I would like to thank all of you for the trust you put in me as your elected official. It is truly my honor and privilege to serve as your Dakota County Commissioner, and I ask for your vote this election season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Slavic. Uh, we will now do a quick transition to get prepared for our state representative candidates. Uh, we just need um, to get our nameplates up there. And candidates, you may proceed forward here to your podium. I should get a bonus for going up there, right? All right, please join me in welcoming our candidates for State Representative 54B, Ms. Tina Fulch and Representative Tony Jurgens. <clears throat> Thank you both for participating tonight. Ms. Fulch, we will get, we, you will get to go first with the opening statement. You have one minute and you can start when you are ready. Terrific. Hi, I'm Tina Fulch. Thank you all for coming this evening. I'm currently, currently I 
serve here on the Hastings City Council. And I'm stepping up to be our next representative in St. Paul because I believe we deserve someone focused on our needs rather than that of big business. Standing on the sidelines isn't an option for me when we watch our roads, healthcare, and schools fall further behind while we see corporations getting historic tax breaks from Republican-led legislature. Our district needs comprehensive solutions to ensure that we all have access to affordable, quality health care. And we have to stop placing the burden of school funding on the backs of property taxpayers because Republicans provide funding increases that don't even keep up with inflation. That's why I'm endorsed by people who care about us, such as the mayors of Afton, Cottage Grove, the AFL-CIO, Teamsters, teachers, nurses, the Sierra Club, and many of the other local unions. I need your help to make these changes possible, and I'll work hard for you every day on your behalf. I look forward to tonight's forum. Thanks again for being here this evening. Thank you. Before we, I let you get started, uh, Mr. Jurgens, I want to get, fix your name tag. That's just going to bug me. Anybody have any gum? <laughs> yeah, Ron. There we go. Good thank you. Go. All right. Thank you for your patience on that, and I apologize for that. Representative Jurgens, your turn. May you please give your opening statement, and you have one minute. Thank you, Tom. First of all, thank you all for coming here tonight. It's a great turnout, and it's, it's great to see so many of you here uh, on this important night to hear about the candidates in this race, the mayoral race, and the city council race. I want to thank Tom Wright and the uh, local cable channel 14 for putting this on, along with Christy Bars and the Hastings Area Chamber of Commerce. Serving as your state representative for the last two years uh, has been the privilege of a lifetime. Uh, I can't tell you how uh, enjoyable it is to hear from you, to handle questions when, when you have issues that, that you're having with a state agency. Uh, I don't ask if you're a Republican or a Democrat. I just do what I can to help. I represent all of the people of 54B, and that's what I want to continue to do for the next term. Uh, these, these terms come very quickly at two years. Um, so I just, again, I want to thank all of you for coming tonight. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you will get to answer this next question, Mr. Jurgens. What is the biggest challenge facing the state of Minnesota, and how would you address it? The biggest, asking the, the biggest question is kind of like asking how long is a piece of string. There are a lot of issues that we're going to be facing this year. 2019 is a budget year. So the, the budget is going to be one of the biggest things that we, that we tackle. Uh, first and foremost, the first thing that we need to address has to do with tax conformity. Uh, we passed a couple different tax bills last year that we sent to the governor. Unfortunately, the governor vetoed those. I wish I could tell you different, but um, when we all do our tax returns this year, it's going to be ugly. So the very first thing that we need to do in 2019 is address tax conformity. Um, and we also have to deal with the budget. But the thing that I keep hearing about at the doors from all of you is the price of the cost of health insurance. So there are many priorities that we need to deal with in the coming legislative session, and those are some of them. And Ms. Fulch, what is the biggest challenge facing the state of Minnesota, and how would you address it? Thanks, Tom. I believe it's health care. I think health care is a basic human need that we can all understand. And I think we can all agree that the current system is just not working, primarily because the insurance industry is out of control. I just found out yesterday that my own family insurance premiums are going up by 18% this next year. We don't need scattershot approaches, such as we've seen the last two years. Over half a billion dollars of taxpayer funds were given directly to insurance companies with virtually no strings attached. To temporarily stabilize, the market for just 3% of Minnesotans. We need solutions to tame runaway price growth. One of the biggest differences between myself and Representative Jurgens is that he literally is a professional insurance agent working for the insurance company profits, whereas I believe we need to create competition with private industry by creating a Minnesota health plan that is a government option for the public to buy into to help our people 
business sectors, governmental entities, and get health insurance expenses under control. We I'm sorry you're out of time, Ms. Fulch. I'll have to stop you right there. Oh, okay. All righty. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Can I ask a Thank question? You. I'm sorry. You'll be able to respond in your next uh, answer, Mr. Jurgens. Um, Ms. Fulch, you get to answer first for this next one. Sure. Do you feel labor laws, including minimum wage rates, should be addressed at the local or at the state level, and why? Thank you, Tom. Well, you know, what we've actually seen the last two years has been an assault by the legislature on local government control. We've seen in total 54 bills that have been in introduced primarily by um, Republicans, mostly with the, with the slant that they're trying to take away local government control on behalf of big business in some kind of capacity. Um, Representative Jurgens, uh, we asked him and, uh, by uh, the City Council and the Cottage Grove, our, I'm sorry, our Hastings City Council and the Cottage Grove City Council, we passed resolutions asking for Representative Jurgens not to support preemption bills. However, he decided that he um, took a lead chief author role in one of the worst of the preemption bills that takes away the right from municipalities to be able to um, define minimum wages and benefits for their communities, um, and that mostly affects Minneapolis and St. Paul. So he put the needs of big business first over that of the working poor. And I'm sorry so I I'm don't to support interrupt you again, Ms. Fultz, ran out of time. Sure, Thank thanks. you. Uh, Mr. Jurgens, um, I'll ask you the question again. Do you feel labor laws, including minimum wage rates, should be addressed at the local or at the state level, and why? Labor laws need to be addressed at the state level. We can't afford to have a patchwork of labor laws uh, throughout the entire state of Minnesota. Now, the League of Minnesota Cities reached out to the various cities throughout the state and said, please contact your legislators um, about this, the preemption bill. Um, I can assure you, no one in this district, no one in Hastings, no one in Cottage Grove was harmed in any way by that preemption bill. This was the League of Minnesota Cities that was reaching out in order to protect Minneapolis and St. Paul. Now, many of you here I know are small business owners. If you would be doing business in various cities, you are going to be uh, asked to take uh, to, to note the, the wage rates and the personal time off rates for every employee that you have as soon as they get into those different cities, when they get to Minneapolis. If they move from Minneapolis to St. Paul, then you're going to have to uh, track it at a different rate. That's going to be on your shoulders to do that. And if we have a patchwork of labor laws throughout the state of Minnesota, you're right, it's not good for business. And one other thing, words matter. And there is a difference between uh, chief author and co-author. I was a co-author of that bill. I'm going to have to interrupt and I ran out of time. Sorry, Mr. Jurgens. Next question, and we'll stay with you, Mr. Jurgens. Um, many residents see less partisanship as the solution to get more done at the Capitol. Please describe a time where you worked with multiple stakeholders, including those with different viewpoints than your own, to successfully move a project forward. Well, I've spent uh, my first term building relationships on both sides of the aisle so that I can be more effective um, for you, the, the voters, and the residents of our district. I'll give you an example. Today, I went to a farm to school um, event in Minneapolis at Washburn High School. I was the only Republican there. I was there with Representative Ray Dean, a Democrat, Fu Lee, a Democrat, uh, <coughs> Senator uh, uh, Tina Smith was there. None of us were, we weren't talking politics. We were talking about this program. This is a very valuable food to uh, farm to school program that benefits kids and it benefits farmers. That's the way I've approached my job um, since I got there two years ago. And I think if you ask the Democrats that I serve with in the House of Representatives, I think that you'll get that same answer, that I'm somebody that they know that they can count on that I'll work with them. And I'll continue to do that. Other people like to paint uh, as partisan, but I think that the people that, that claim uh, partisanship are they themselves the most partisan. Thank you. Ms. Fulch, I'll repeat the question for you. Many residents see less partisanship as the solution to get more done at the Capitol. Please describe a time where you worked with multiple stakeholders, including those with different viewpoints than your own, to successfully move a project forward. Thank you, Tom. Well, I've worked for the last 20 years professionally within state and local government. At the state of Minnesota, I worked for the Departments of Public Safety, the Department of Employment and Economic Development, and at MnDOT. Currently, I work for the city of Red Wing as a contracts administrator, 
where I take care of the majority of uh, big construction projects that are facility related and a lot, a lot of the large acquisitions for the city. And I can tell you, um, working in those capacities is always nonpartisan. You have to know how to work across the aisle with everyone and all stakeholders to be able to get the job done for the benefit of your community. And currently I work on, I'm on the city council, like I said before, here in Hastings, and we're, we're not partisan, you know, although um, we don't, you know, wear our colors, um, you know, we, we try our best to get along. I mean, clearly there's some of us on the council who have very different viewpoints, but we try very hard to work together and to uh, and work as a team to move our, our city forward. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Yep. We will now hear your questions to each other. Uh, these have been submitted in advance and have been vetted. I would like to note to the audience. Um, it is Ms. Fulch's turn to answer the question first. So, Ms. Mr. Jurgens, you may ask your question to Ms. Fulch. Thank you, Tom. You I, I'm sorry, before, uh, and I just remind the candidates we have one minute for this one as well. Okay, thanks. This is like speed dating, isn't it? <laughs> it's very nerve wracking. <laughs> You've expressed support for single-payer health care. By most estimates, this will cost $17 billion per year, requiring taxes to double on Minnesotans to pay for it. Specifically, what taxes do you propose to raise to pay for this? Can I go? Great. Well, thank you, Tony. Um, I do support moving our state and nation perhaps eventually towards single payer. Uh, currently, I think that their most viable option is that we move towards an expansion of Medicaid where there's a public buy-in option um, underneath a Minnesota health plan that would help employers, um, the public, and even governmental entities be able to get health care uh, healthcare expenses under control. Um, single payer, actually, what he's alluding to, that statistic there, comes from um, a report from the Lewin Group, and that actual study says that that $17 billion would be the overall cost, but it doesn't take into consideration that then you wouldn't be paying in your premium or co-pays and deductibles and all of that kind of stuff, that there would actually be a significant overall savings for everyone. And so that little um, blurb there is completely taken out of context. The entire report actually fully supports single payer health care moving forward within our state. Thank you. All right, Ms. Fulch, it's your turn to ask your question to Mr. Jorgens, and you may start whenever you are ready. Sure. Um, well, with the recent appointment of Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court, there's a great deal of speculation that Roe versus Wade will be overturned and reproductive rights will be turned back to the individual states to decide. If this happens, what would you do to protect the rights of women within our state? My role as a state legislator will be to protect the lives of the unborn. I am pro-life. I've got the endorsement of the Minnesota Concerned Citizens for Life, and that's how I will vote. There you go. Thank you both. All right, finally, the closing statement, and we'll start with you, Mr. Jurgens, and please tell us why Hastings should vote for you. You have one minute. Thank you very much, Tom. You know, this, uh, this campaign season has been going on. I know I, from the the looks on your faces when I come to your door. I know we're all tired of it. We want it to just be done. And, uh, you know, we're in the same boat. Um, but this is an important election. I think that I have represented you well for the last two years. Uh, I think I've, I've represented you with honesty and integrity. Um, I've not been playing fast and loose with the rules or with the, uh, with the truth. Um, I think I've earned it. Um, I hope I've earned it, and I'm going to continue the last 10 days or so knocking on your doors and talking to you so that I can hear from you what's important to you, because I represent all of you. I don't rep just represent Republicans. I'm not out to, to you know, do anything uh, negative to Democrats. I'm here to represent all of you. Thank you very much again for coming tonight. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And Ms. Fulch, your turn for your closing statement. Please <coughs> tell Hastings why they should vote for you. And you have one minute. Thank you, Tom. Well, um, again, thank you everyone for being here. Um, I left my notes in my uh, <laughs> purse for my uh, closing speech. Do you mind if I grab them real quick? Um, sorry, we nope, weren't able to do that. Nope, I don't get a chance. Okay. Alrighty. So my um, closing words were, 
um, you know, I'm stepping up to represent our community, like I said before, because I truly believe that we deserve someone who's going to be representing the needs of our community. Um, I, I can't believe I forgot my notes and I'm completely stumped at this point, thrown off. Um, so I, I thank you all for, for coming. I apologize for being completely, uh, forgetting uh, my closing points, and I hope you have an, a good evening. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you both again for participating. And how about a round of applause for our candidates here? <laughs> again, Ms. Tina Fulch and Mr. Tony Jurgens. Thank you. We will now take a five-minute break and to transition to the Hastings City Council at large candidates. So please uh, bear with us while we get that set up. Um, but we plan. I'm going to time these guys. We'll see if we can do it under five minutes. Thank you. Welcome back to the 2018 Hastings Candidate Forum presented by Hastings Community TV as well as the Hastings Area Chamber of Commerce. We are in round two and in round two we are going to hear from our candidates running for at-large city council. Please join me in welcoming our three candidates, Ms. Lori Brooks, Mr. Tom Cherney and Mr. Mark Vaughn. In this race are two seats, and we do have our two incumbents here. Ms. Lori Brox is our incumbent candidate, as well as Mr. Vaughn is our, our second incumbent candidate. All right. So we'll start with you, Ms. Brox, uh, with the opening statement. You have one minute, and you can start whenever you're ready. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to, I'm Lori Brox. I'm going to introduce myself briefly. Um, I'm a 1997 graduate of Hastings Senior High School. I graduated um, from UW Eau Claire, and I also have my law degree from William Mitchell College of Law. Um, my family is here, um, my in laws and my parents are here, so I'm very proud that they're here. Um, I was last elected in 2014. Um, I'm at the end of my first four year term. I'm married to Tommy. Um, for 11 years and I have two children Jonathan and Grace and tonight I'm here to talk with you about what I have done and what I will do um, both of the men to my left are honorable men um, and honorable opponents but I look forward to sharing my view of what will make Hastings an even stronger place to live and work thank you mr. Cherney your turn for your opening statement you have one minute and may start when you're ready thanks a lot obviously I'm Tom Cherney Obviously, I'm not a politician. I've never done this before, and I'll tell you, it's absolutely amazing. And Lori's quite right. Anybody who contributes their time to this city deserves our honorable re respect. It's just amazing. And that's how we started from the beginning, making the decision to run here. You can go through all my education, the jobs I've held. Uh, they're pretty, pretty extensive, and that's why I made the decision to pay back to this town. I've got a wonderful family. The smartest thing I did is I married a girl from Vermilion, and Janet and I have uh, six adult children, and I owe this town a lot. Extensive background, 27 years in the Air Force, three master's degree, which I found out doesn't mean a thing if you don't have wisdom in the first place. So that's, that's me. What you see tonight is what you're going to get. Thank you. And now for you, Mr. Vaughn, please provide your opening statements, and you may start when you're ready. Thank you, Tom. My name is Mark Vaughn. Uh, my wife Beth and I are uh, lifelong residents of Hastings. We were born and raised here. We went to school here. We left Hastings. We went over to the Egan for a while to live there. But when we started our family, we said, let's come back home. Uh, we had a great experience here. We wanted our kids to have that same experience, if not a better experience. Uh, we got three girls that came through the program or through the schools and our community here. Mary's now a freshman up at the University of North Dakota. Martha and Molly are twins over at the high school as sophomores. Uh, professionally, I work, f I, I work for cities. I started here at the city of Hastings. I went off to the city of Norfield, city of Apple Valley. Last 23 years, I've been over at the city of Egan. I manage uh, enterprise funds, a, a civic arena, and a water park for the city. Uh, personally, our family, um, we, we, we're involved in the community. We're active members of St. Members of Philip's Lutheran Church. Um, I'm lucky enough to be on the United Way Board of Hastings. 
Um, if there's any time left, our family tries to stay together. We try to go to a family trip or just enjoy Minnesota. Tonight, I look forward to this conversation. I, I, it's great to see this many people showing interest in this, and uh, I really look forward to the next 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Turney, you get the honor of answering this first question. What is the biggest challenge facing Hastings, and how would you address it? You know, I figured that was going to be one of your questions. <laughs> I think we all hear about things that are addressed right here in Hastings. Transportation, of course, economics. They all tie together. Transportation, internal, external, building the city up, the tax base. The bottom line is they're all intermingled to one another. We just need to get going. Take a look at what we're doing, how we can do it better. I'm a doer. I learned this in my past positions of multi-diverse organizations. I've had to run big units. The bottom line is you got to do things. You got to reach out to people. The biggest infrastructure you got in this town is people. You've got to tie it all together. We just have to get going and involve everybody. If you think government's going to do it all, guess what? It takes the business community, it takes the people out there, it takes private organizations, faith-based organizations. We should just get them tied together and move on. Thank you. Mr. Vaughn, your turn with this one. What is the biggest challenge Hastings is facing and how would you address it? I think Tom talked about there's there's really three little three big things right now we got housing transportation and economic development I think we'll probably see those questions but I think the priority right now in this community is our housing I think we need to really focus on that because I think it ties to the other two um, we just got to be careful rooftops are expensive you got to think about when we build a house we're gonna build a street a sewer a water line uh, we're gonna get data coming in saying we have police fire we're gonna need more we, we got to be careful about growing too fast I think we got to have a uh, sometimes an exit plan. What happens if our population drops? How do we back off on some of those services? Staff gives us great data on inventory. We know what's out there for housing. Um, but I, we had a commissioner ask the other night at a planning commission. It was a great question. He says, do we have any data on what the people want, though? Because we know what the inventory is. That's a great question. I appreciate that commissioner asking that. But uh, we need, I think we need to be location focused. We've got to look at what is the place to put housing and then also what are the priorities what are the trends and I think uh, right now we're hearing density a lot so we get housing for everyone is what we're looking for thank you Ms. Brooks your turn uh, with this one what is the biggest challenge facing Hastings and how would you address it well I think Mr. Turney and Mr. Vaughn have both both addressed economic development fairly thoroughly so I'm going to take a slightly different approach to the question which is a short-term priority in Hastings is to address our water and our water system and what we're doing about that right now is that we're doing a feasibility study and we're looking at the um, addition of chlorine to the water and other disinfection options uh, and part of and we're using a, a firm to do that by the name of Stantec we're gonna look at the costs and the benefits of each of the options and decide which one makes makes the best sense for Hastings and we're doing a communication analysis we're doing an analysis of how we get information out to residents quickly in these emergency type situations and um, we're also leading an effort across the county to make sure that the Everbridge system which is our reverse 911 is updated and has good information so that when we need to reach people we can thank you going on to the next question and mr. Vaughn you'll be the first to answer this one please describe a time where you stood up for what you believed in even though you knew it was not the popular decision it was recent. Um, we had uh, a housing uh, recently up at uh, the Wallen Development over there. And um, you know what? That was a challenge. That was probably one of the largest challenges I had as a council member because it, it fit all the rules to a degree, but we interpret rules different. Staff had said that a cluster development, some history here is they, uh, the developer wanted to put a cluster development, meaning townhomes inside a single family home development that's currently going on. It took a lot of work and a lot of research to find out that we had a difference of opinion. I believe I stood up for the residents saying that did not meet the cluster development concept. I think that we did the right thing for the residents because the residents are the ones that live here. That developer owns the land, but we also got to make sure that we're representing the people that live in that area. I think that was the hardest decision for me. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Brooks, allow me to repeat the question. Sure. Please describe a time where you stood up for what you believed in, even though you knew it was not the popular decision. 
The one, the biggest one that comes to mind, I've um, been the chair of the Public Safety co um, Committee of the Council for two years, and the one that stands out in my mind that was the most difficult for me um, was a sex offender um, distance law that we sent through the committee process and also ha held several public meetings to talk about it. Um, because of my legal background and my understanding of the Constitution and just my personal beliefs, I didn't feel that that law was in line with the state constitution. And so I did lead the community through the process of looking at the options and discussing how the law, how the language would look. And we had a lot of community feedback from people in the neighborhood that really wanted to enact the law. And at the end, when we held the city council meeting, I did share my view um, that I didn't think it was a constitutional law and may in fact be challenged. And in fact, there was a challenge to a similar law in South St. Paul um, where the offender actually collected a lot of money from the city um, because they didn't, deemed it unconstitutional. So um, that was a difficult situation, but I feel that I held my ground for good reason. Thank you. And Mr. Turney, your turn with this one, and uh, please allow me to repeat it. Please describe a time where you stood up for what you believed in, even though you knew it was not the popular decision. Thank you, Tom. Mine's a little bit different. Mine's in reverse. I had to make a decision being in the Air Force to say no to about four general officers concerning the people who worked with me. It was an early morning and we had a, I worked in a pretty classified operation and they made a mistake. The order was given, fire all the officers and fire, fire all the non-commissioned officers, a total of 12 people. It was six o'clock in the morning because I remember this explicitly. I looked at him straight in the eye and said, I'm in charge, you fire me. And he says, you weren't here. I said, that's exactly why. If you want them fired, you fire them, but you fire me first. Which meant probably I'd be blowing up beach balls in Iceland someplace. <laughs> Great way to end that, I do have to stop there. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Ms. Brooks, your turn to go on this. In your opinion, how can the city balance reasonable taxation while still providing strong quality of life services? Um, when we go through the budget cycle every year, we take this into consideration, and we have to take into consideration both the impact of the tax rate on businesses and the impact of the tax rate on residences. And so we're balancing the needs of each department along with and their wants and desires to support their staff, along with um, the ability to keep the tax rate down. So in the last four years, uh, the value of the homes in Hastings has gone up increasingly. And our goal on the Finance Committee has been to lower the tax rate so we don't take full advantage of the fact that people's housing values are going up, we try to push the tax rate down, even though we have some extra room to work with because the, the market is, is increasing. So our goal is always to spend a good amount of the money on public safety, which we feel is important. So we spend about 33% of our budget on public safety, and we've increased our infrastructure and our expenditure on roads and sewers, and we have a lot of things to take care of. Oh, thank you. Mr. Turney, in your opinion, how can the city balance reasonable taxation while still providing strong quality of life services? It's back to the budgets. At the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, I think I had a total budget of about $13 million. You have to take a look at every specific action. If you're going to be in charge of anything, you have to get down in the dirt and make sure that you have all the information. You can't do it yourself. There's a lot of talent in this town. There's a lot of businessmen who are retired. There's a lot of people who know what they're talking about. Have a commission that does nothing but look at this budget before it becomes part of the process going through the government. Sit down and talk with the department heads. Figure out where you're at and see how you can build different parts of your budget. What we did basically, I went to every director and said, I'm gonna take 10% of your budget and we're gonna put it over here and we're gonna take and make sure that if something does come up, and if not, we'll give it back the back of the way. So in other words, you gotta grease the skids. It's not how much tax you get, it's how much you spend. Thank you. Mr. Vaughn, 
In your opinion, how can the city balance reasonable taxation while still providing strong quality of life services? I think these two, these two already hit on the, the big picture of it. We struggle with this every year when we go through the budget cycle. I think we should get to a two-year budget cycle so we can plan out a little bit. I want to specifically talk about economic development because that's a portion of this budget. It's a broad subject. It's service. It's filling storefronts and pay, getting good paying jobs. Think about what we say. People say we should be calling people to fill up the storefront. I would use caution. I want to let people know we don't direct staff to do that because the first question is going to be what incentive do you have for me? And we got to be careful because we are taxpayers too. We start giving away taxes, someone else has to pick up that balance. So I would caution people of that. The best thing we could do is support ourselves. Residents to residents, business to business, we need to keep as much as we can in this community. And I think that's the challenge that we all work together to get this budget up to uh, acceptable. I think we also got to be realistic. We can't have everything at one time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Turney, uh, you get to be the first with the closing statement. You have one minute, and please tell Hastings why they should vote for you. First of all, I'm going to tell you why I'm running. I love this town. This is our home. I've been here 16 years, and trust me, there's no other place like it. There isn't a day go by, Janet, and I don't thank God that we live here. The people are great. I've walked this city. i walked the entire city in the last 90 days. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you right now what wonderful people. Out of this entire town, only one individual was less than accepting, okay? And he was probably having a bad day. This is a giving town. It's my turn to give back. I promise I work hard. Every job I've had, I focused on a purpose. I love this town. And that's why I'm sitting up here going, this is what you see is what you get. I work hard no matter what I do, and I love this place. Way beyond, I can really articulate to you. We're so lucky to live here, and the people here are fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Turney. Mr. Vaughn, your closing statement, please. T please tell Hastings why they should vote for you. All right. Thank you, Tom, and thank you to Hastings TV. Thank you to the Chamber for hosting this opportunity. I tell you what, I've had a great experience representing you for the last four years as an elected official. I've learned a lot. I've really approached this with a creative mind and an open mind. Uh, I believe we've made great strides at keeping our community strong, and I think we're systematically moving forward. I hope the residents understand I got a vision, I got a purpose, but really I got experience. I've been doing this for four years, but before that I volunteered for 12 years for the city on all of our uh, commissions of planning, parks and recreation, and charter. Uh, I think I think I've earned it, and I hope that you choose to vote for me again uh, to represent you for another term. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vaughn. And finally, with you, Ms. Brooks, please provide your closing statement and tell Hastings why they should vote for you. Thank you. I am a, one thing I didn't mention in my opening statement is that I am privately employed, and I am privately employed by Thomson Reuters. And I think there's an advantage and a different perspective that I bring because I'm not in the full-time day-to-day government work job. Um, so I think I bring that. I also um, ask a lot of questions. Whenever we have an issue that comes up before the city council, I've shown that I'm curious and I'm willing to research and look at the facts. I'm also willing to ask questions and to understand um, all the issues before we vote on them. Um, then that kind of ties into my job as well. Because I'm a data analysis person, I am interested in finding out the facts and figuring out what, what it is that we're dealing with. Um, I would just ask that you would consider me. I've, oh, I'm at the end of my first term. I feel that I've done a good job. I've tried to do it with honesty and integrity. I've tried to listen to people. And I feel like I'm just getting started. Thank you. And Mr. Turney. Well, I'm sorry. We, everybody went, didn't they? Yeah. I, I, I guess I just wanted to hear from more, you again. I want to hear more, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hear more about beach ball. I want to hear more about beach ball. I apologize. <laughs> I just want I keep wanting to hear more. Thank you all three for participating in this tonight's forum. How about a round of applause for our candidates? Uh, all right, we're gonna take a five minute break and get ready for our mayoral candidates. And so we'll be back very shortly. Thank you. We now are in round three, the final round of tonight's forum, uh, to hear from our candidates running for Hastings 
Mayor. Please join me in welcoming our two candidates, Ms. Dana Elling Schultz and Ms. Mary <clears throat> Passbender. <clears throat> Thank you both for participating tonight. Ms. Schultz, we will start with you on the opening statement. You have two minutes and you may start whenever you are ready. Thank you, Tom. Um, I'm Dana Elling Schultz. Um, um, and I'm um, happy to see you all here. I thank the, the chamber and uh, HCTV for putting this on. Um, I know this is the, the second round that we've had in the last couple of years. So um, this is a great way to keep voters informed. So I'm very happy that we're able to um, do that and to see all the people that, that are here interested in the upcoming election. Um, I came to Hastings 32 years ago with my husband, Doug Schultz, when he got a job at the Hastings Star Gazette. Um, we immediately got ourselves involved in the community, um, St. Philip's Lutheran Church, where we are still members, um, the Hastings Tennis League, which I will admit I'm still not that great at, but I'm still playing after um, 27 or 32 odd years. Um, and um, we have two daughters, um, Libby, who just managed to get here from her, her other um, event, and um, Abby, who is at her um, grad, grad school class over in River Falls tonight, so the girls tag teamed being here for their mom. Um, we have two cats and a dog, and uh, so we're very busy people, obviously. I served 16 years on the Hastings City Council, as many of you know. Um, I was, um, I've been actively involved in uh, the city for uh, many number of years. I started out on the Parks Board because that's a very big interest of mine, the environment and um, park development and something that I think is very, very important for a successful city to have. I went, moved on to the Planning Commission and then I um, became, um, uh, was elected to the council. I want to say one thing, um, I have a journalism degree from the University of Minnesota. I worked my way through college. And um, my current day job, as many of you know, is at the state legislature. And I want you to know that um, I spend a lot of time, um, a lot of time, especially in the um, f uh, winter months, advocating for uh, K through 12 public <clears throat> school education. I work with a variety of different people and we spend long, long hours um, making sure schools have what they need for uh, quality education in the state of Minnesota. Thank you. Ms. Fassbender, your turn for your opening statements. Thanks, Tom, and thanks for all of you coming. Thanks again to the Chamber and HCTV for doing this. This is my first campaign, as most of you know. I am not a politician, but I am a communitician. For 40 years, I have worked very hard for this community, not for myself, but to make it a better place. Um, my parents, I, I grew up in Meesville, a small town south of here, um, home of the Mud Hens, which, yes, I am still a Mud Hen. Brian? No, sorry. Um, but anyway, uh, my father was a business owner and a fire chief of Meesville, who I saw go to work every day, 24 hours, seven days a week. My mother was a housewife during the day, and by night she were, was a waitress at Wiederholtz. We learned as children to give back to your community that you love. I loved Meesfell. We worked. I worked hard there to until I was 19 years old, and I moved to Hastings. And then um, I started the minute I I got my first job in Hastings. I opened my business when I was 23 years old, and um, yes, counting the numbers, it's 34 years later, and I still own a business, but I do not have employees. I work for my I just myself now, so I could give more time to the city. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll stay with you, Ms. Fassbender, for the sure. first question here. Clean water has been a recent concern in Hastings. How satisfied are you with the steps the city has taken to this point? What has been done well? And what, if anything, would you do differently? That's a real big issue, Tom, um, in the city, as we all know. Anywhere I go, I get a comment. Um, I don't know that people are terribly dissatisfied with it, but I know the smell really bothers them. And you try to tell them that there's a process to go through. I think the city did a great job in what they, what they did do. One point of interest that I'm um, gonna concentrate on is a, an emergency alert system for the whole city. There were a lot of people that did not get that an alert about it. So I think our communication with 
our uh, residents needs to become more and more for any type of situation. And um, I know Dakota County, they worked with Dakota County to um, put the larger alert out and I think that helped, but I think the city has to grasp on this for the residents' sake that they need to feel safe in whatever situation. I don't care if it's water or what it is. So therefore, I would, I would strongly um, try to work harder to make communication more in depth with the residents. Thank you. Ms. Schultz, uh, allow me to repeat the question. Clean water has been a recent concern in Hastings. How satisfied are you with steps the city has taken to this point? What has been done well? And what, if anything, would you do differently? Um, thank you, Tom, for that question. Um, I have um, a four-point plan that I put out on my um, webpage shortly after um, the E. coli outbreak. Um, and I think, first of all, we need to update the city's crisis communication plan because um, more, more needed to be done to get the information out quickly um, to let people know that the water, that the water available and to the businesses that it wasn't safe to drink and there was a, a boil water advisory. Um, I want to work to find a solution to, so that we can have safe water without chlorination. Because I'll be honest with you, the water tastes and smells bad. Um, I just, I've got to buy bottled water now because I just don't, um, I just can't drink it the way it is. So we have to figure out a solution to that. Um, I, I think that the city council should immediately come up with a, um, uh, uh, re uh, request that the Minnesota Department of, of Health come down here and have a community-wide meeting to talk about um, the water issue, sort of how the, how the process works and what they can do to help us get to a, a point where we've got clean water. And finally, um, I want to continue to study why we had the E. coli problem in the first place because if it was something that, um, if it was the sprinkler backups as they were talking about when the uh, when the sprinklers get blown out or if it was something to do with some of the construction we were doing. Um, we need to find out the source of the problem so that if it's something that we can solve without the chlorination issue, then I think that's what we should do. Thank you. And we'll stay with you, Ms. Schultz, to answer this next question. As the mayor, what qualifications would you look for in a city administrator and how would you measure that performance? Um, thank you, Tom. That's a very good question. Um, what qualities would I look for? Um, I want someone who can come here and will have the best interests of our community at heart and will have a vision that will coincide with that of um, our city council and the goals that we set forward. I believe that, that um, the, the, city, the city administrator essentially works for the council and for the mayor and that we need to be working in sync with each other in order for us to have a quality, um, a quality city that is moving forward and that will have the residents behind the person who is, um, who is leading the city in terms of the day-to-day -day operations. Um, and we also need to have the staff be behind the city administrator. It's very, very important for that because if you don't have that kind of cohesion, you are simply not going to move forward and the goals that you set out as a city council and a mayor will not get accomplished. Um, and I, I will look um, for a person who is obviously intelligent um, and in tune with some of the, the, the latest um, and newest things that we would be able to embark on as a city. And I, I've, I served under two city, or I served with two city administrators um, while I was on the council, and they had differing styles, but I think they both um, have the, the interests of, of Hastings at heart, and that is really what we need to have um, in the next person that we have if our current city administrator were to leave. Thank you. Thank you. And now to you, Ms. Fassbender. Uh, please allow me to repeat the question. As the mayor, what qualifications would you look for in a city administrator, and how would you measure that performance? Well, first of all, I would be the probably the one working with her or he the closest. So we would have to have a um, unique relationship because I'm here for the residents and what their wants and needs are. And sometimes the administrator doesn't maybe go out into the community as we do as council people and mayor. Um, she needs to be, or she or he, um, needs to work well with me. I've had numerous employees before and I've always been told that I am very approachable and I have a heart for the issues that they may be going through at that time. 
I want someone that is going to go out into the community and shake hands with the people so they recognize her and know that she is a part of this community. I would love to um, have the city administrator of the city work closer with uh, the chamber, the ministerial association, um, businesses to make Hastings move forward in the direction of the business that the businesses want and the um, look for move forward with what the residents want to. Thank you. And we'll stay with you, Ms. Ms. Fassbender, to answer this uh, the question the first here. Do you believe Hastings needs to grow? If yes, please describe what you see as the barriers to growth and what you propose to do about them. Well, um, in my, I, I announced I was going to run for mayor October 4th, a year ago. So I've had a year to work with people, to listen to what they want. Um, I have learned that grow is a scary word for a lot of people. So I personally have changed that word to develop. That means in residential, businesses, parks, moving forward to create new developments within Hastings to make it a better place. Um, growth, as I've been told by others, uh, they don't want to see Hastings grow. They like it just the way it is. So I think development or develop is a, a kinder, softer word, and I think it's more um, attainable to, to talk to people about it. And with that, yes, I would love to see Hastings develop. Um, we do need housing. As I spoke Monday night at their other forum, you know, we're kind of stuck in a hard place because there are seniors that really don't have anywhere to go. And if we had places for those seniors to move to, then the younger families could move into those homes, the Ramblers, the smaller areas like where I live, 13th and Walnut. Those are family type homes. And those are the homes that families can afford and they, you know, they have three and four bedrooms. Most of them are bigger. So if we could, what comes first to get families here? Do you have to build something for the, the families or do you have to build something for the seniors so they can progressively move in the directions that Hastings needs to develop? Thank you. Ms. Schultz, I'll repeat the question for you. Do you believe Hastings needs to grow if yes, please describe what you see as the barriers to growth and what you propose to do about them. Thank you. Um, I think that um, we have to create the conditions so that um, we can recruit um, and retain businesses and so that we can have the development we need in, in housing um, in order for our city to move forward. And when you, in order to create those conditions, you need things like a solid transportation system that can move people around the city and um, to and from other places when they need to do that. And um, a, a number of ways that you can do that is, first of all, as the mayor, you, you actually have the bully pulpit to go out and talk to people and say, we would really like it for you to come here and here's what we have to offer you. We have an industrial park where you can get land for a dollar and, and it is ready for you to purchase and develop. Um, we, have, we have options, we have space for you to build homes if um, we're ready. And you know, if we're gonna bring t do townhomes for the elderly, then they can move out of those. Um, the homes that become starter homes and we can bring in the new residents. And we also need to have the appropriate jobs so we can do the workforce development because if we have, if we've got that kind of um, development then we will get young people to come here. As a matter of fact, I just had an email um, after the, um, the Monday forum from a gentleman who wants to meet with me. I'm gonna chat with him on Saturday morning. Um, he was really um, interested in the, off, um, the office park co-working space that I was talking about. I, I talked about this about three years ago when I was still on the council. It is a way that we can offer um, Hastings residents and Hastings businesses an opportunity to stay here, do their work, telecommute, take care of their children, do whatever they need to do, and still have the right kind of office space um, they need to do their jobs. And um, it goes along with the broadband and the fiber optic that I know um, Councilmember Fulch is working on, um, and I've been told I need to stop, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll stay with you, Ms. Schultz, to answer this question first. The city of Hastings recently had two high-profile incidents in which the mayor had to deliver a message to the community. Mm -hmm. 
Can you explain a time where you, as a leader, had to deliver a tough message to an audience? If so, is there anything you would have done differently? Hmm. I am thinking about that one. <laughs> Um, is this, would this be in my council or as in a, in another position in my life? Any position you like. Anything that I would, I would like to, I would like to do. Okay. Thank you. Um, I believe that, um, the one time, um, that, uh, we, we had, um, some, some tough things that we had to do was, um, this was, um, before I was ever on the council and I was working on, um, when we wanted to build, uh, the new swimming pool and we held a referendum and I believe this was, um, 1994. Yes, because my, my, uh, my Abby w had been born in September and we were working on this into November and, um, Lynn Moratzka and I were very, um, were very active in this, along with um, Lynn, Lynn McNamara. She and I uh, were on that committee together, and I remember Council Member or Commissioner <coughs> Slavic was on that that um, whole issue too back then. And we didn't win. Um, we worked really hard um, trying to get that done, and I had to tell um, my young daughter that the new swimming pool was not going to be built. And that was a very, um, a very difficult message to have to deliver to a child who really wanted to see that happen. Um, I don't know what I would have done differently other than maybe I would have done, maybe I would have uh, approached, I would have helped approach how we were going to um, build the pool um, or how we were going to get that, um, uh, that bonding done in a different manner. But um, that's that's a long time ago and we do have a lovely pool now and that was thanks to a council that decided to go ahead um, with a bonding project and yeah, I think we've done a great job with our water park. Thank you. Thank you. And now to you Ms. Fassbender and um, please allow me to repeat the question here. The city of Hastings recently had two <clears throat> high profile incidents in which the mayor had to deliver a message to the community. Can you explain a time where you as a leader had to deliver a tough message to an audience? If so, is there anything you would have done differently? For me, that's a really tough question. I, um, I, ju I just don't think of anything that I've had to do other than, I'll, I'll go with my employment. Um, two years ago, almost two and a half years ago now, I had, um, had to make a decision. And it wasn't... It, it, it wasn't a decision, I shouldn't say, but I had the opportunity come to me to sell my business. I had no idea that I, I wasn't even thinking about selling my business, even though I was thinking about this position, knowing that, eh, probably not right now is not the right time. Um, but when I had the opportunity arise, and um, it happened to just go seamlessly, I had to tell my staff which was very hard. I'm emotional about it even, but anyway, um, I just feel I've had a, such a well balance um, of life. I've given years of my business and my government ex expertise um, and experiences and my civic involvement for 40 years for Hastings. So to tell my employees, 11 of them, that I was going to move forward into the position that, <clears throat> excuse me, I have been um, working diligently on for the past 40 years. That was very hard. Um, they all agreed that this is where I need to go. They supported me. That's the worst thing I think I've ever had to do. I don't know. I can't, I, I can't, I just can't think of anything. I've been very fortunate in my life. Thank you. Thank you. We will now hear your questions to each other. These have been submitted in advance and have been vetted. Uh, it is Ms. Fassbender's turn to answer a question first. So, Ms. Schultz, you may ask your question first. Thank you. Uh, Mary, do you support the um, diversity, equity, inclusion resolution as it was written that was approved by the city council and the school board? Absolutely. I, I think that is something that needed to come to Hastings. Um, to be more welcoming, to be um, 
what I would like Hastings to be. Um, diversity, as I have stated before, and many people have said, is such a big word for a community like this because we don't have a lot of diversity in this town. The only way I feel Hastings is going to grow and move forward is by opening these doors up. I was even afraid of the word diversity for a long time. I got involved in the same program that Dana is involved in. We were doing the, we've been doing the labs and going to the um, little um, meetings, and it has opened my eyes to what I would love to see Hastings become. Diversity is big because we're not educated about it. The more we educate our community and ourselves about it, the more opening, the more welcoming, the more people are going to hopefully want to come here because we are a welcoming community. Diversity is um, growing slowly, but we've seen it in the classroom charts of the elementary schools, from the middle schools to the high schools. There's more elementary, elementary um, children coming of color up through our grades, and we have to be there for these kids. We have to be uh, welcoming, I'll keep saying that, um, to our community, and that is going to make us look like we feel. Thank you. And now, Ms. Fassbender, you may ask your question to Ms. Schultz. Dana. Dana. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. You work for the D DFL at the state legislature. You were given the DFL voting list. In a nonpartisan mayoral race, how will you reassure to the other percentage of Hastings voters that you will listen to them? Thank you. I don't believe in labeling people. I believe in trying to make the world a better place for everyone. And my current job is advocating for public school children in the public education system. And I realize that I work for the Democrats. Um, I have not shied away from that with anyone who has asked me. Um, one woman chased me out of her garage. Um, because she didn't like um, my, I just told her I was a Democrat and she said, get out of here. If being a Democrat means you care about families, education, health care, clean water, good jobs, um, I can go down the list, then um, I'm guilty. Um, but those, I, I, I am running for mayor not because of a political agenda or anything that I think that I'm going to impress about upon someone else because of who I am politically. I am running because I believe in Hastings, because I care about this community just as much as you or anyone else in this room does or anyone else who's watching. I, I did not have to stay living here. Um, after we were here and, and my husband and I both got jobs in St. Paul, but we stayed. We stayed because we liked the school district, we liked our church, we liked our friends, and we liked the community who embraced us and wanted us to be here and be part of the community. I will, I pledge to everyone, and I did it when I was on the city council, I represented every single person fairly who came to me and had a question or a concern. And I will do that as your next mayor. Thank you. Thank you. It is now time for closing statements. Ms. Schultz, it's your turn to go first. Please give your closing statement and tell us why Hastings should elect you as mayor. You have two minutes. Okay. Hold on a second, Tom. I actually have quite a few little cards up here. Um, thank you everybody for being here tonight. Um, this has been a great uh, forum and uh, the one on uh, Monday night was great too at the AAUW. I really appreciate that um, we were able to do that. I want to be your next mayor because I will be a strong advocate, advocate for all. I pledge to you we will have transparent government and I will work diligently to make Hastings an even better place. We are poised for success right now, but we cannot wait. 
This is not the time for on-the-job training. This, is, this job takes a person with experience who can hit the ground running and knows what to do at the first meeting. Um, it takes weighing competing interests and options, finding solutions, and putting words into action. And sometimes you don't get your way. Sometimes you have to compromise, and sometimes you have to say, this just isn't going to work this way. I have to figure out a new way to get this done. It is extremely hard work. Um, this is an, uh, an important election. And Hastings, Hastings pivots on what happens, the vote you take in the voting booth, if you vote early or on November 6th. It will determine the next four years of our city. And I very deeply want to serve as your mayor. I am not doing this because someone came and begged me or asked me or flattered me into thinking I could do it. I decided to run because I want to commit to our community and serve it in the best way I possibly can. I am asking for your vote on November 6th. I appreciate <clears throat> everything that everyone has done and all the comments and well wishes I have received. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Fassbender, your turn for your closing statements. And please tell us why Hastings should elect you as mayor. Sure. Thank you, uh, Tom. It's been a fast year. It's been an exciting year. It's been a growing year. Um, I don't want you to vote for me because you know who I am and I'm your friend. I want you to vote for me because you trust me. You've seen me act for the last 40 years civically, economically owning my business, and with my government experiences that I have had with the city. I am not here to tell you that I'm a politician. I am here to tell you that I'm a communitician. I've said it before. I'll say it again. We have been waiting on government to do so many things for so long. I am not governmental. I feel I have the learning experience or the learned experience and I have the people behind me. I'm very approachable and I am very willing to work with this council that's going to be sitting behind me if I become your next mayor. Thank you. How about a round of applause for our candidates for mayor? Thank you both for participating. Again, Ms. Dan Elling Schultz, it's Mary Fassbender. I'd like to thank the Hastings Area Chamber for co-hosting and planning this event. I'd also like to thank the city for their support and providing the site to do this. And of course, I'd like to thank you all here at City Hall for joining us and for those at home watching us as well. Um, you know, an extra thanks for my crew, um, Mike Bramer, Kurt Radke, we got Ch uh, Ron Umquist here, Dave Wozlik, uh did a fantastic job, put a lot of time and effort into this. And um, also, uh, so now it's time to vote. We hope this helps you, make you, helps you with your decision to vote, so please do so. Have a good night. Thank you.